Okay, I'm reloaded. How y'all doing today? Charles here. I'm your favorite entrepreneur. So this is wrong. Let me show y'all something. I just put this up in the group. And so what I'm looking at right now, this is like standard information when you get deals in. And no matter who gets this deal and wants to purchase it, they're going to look for, and I'm going to go down, but I'm going to just go off top what people are looking for. They're going to look at this. Rents are below market rents, approximately $30 on one bedrooms. And this is how many units? 240 units. <coughs> and so they look at the mix, the unit mix of how many rooms there are, one, two, and three bedrooms. Some people like to have more two bedrooms than there are one bedroom. It is dependent on the area. But these, look at the average size. These are big, like a thousand that's square feet. That, that's huge as far as rooms are concerned. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to start right here to look at, you know, there's value play in adding, you know, not adding, but in, in, in increasing the rents. So 30, 150, 140. So whatever the room mix is, you add that and then that'll be how much money you can make at the end of the year. In a sense, once you, because every year, most people just increase rents. So when I get this, I look at this, it needs a, uh, non-binding LOI, letter of intent. And this is, everybody needs the financials. I don't care who you're talking to. They need to be able to see the numbers. When they see the numbers, they're going to look at the T12 or the trailing 12. They're going to look at the rent roll. And on there, you're going to have, uh, you know, hopefully you see the expenses and everything on there. And so you can just, uh, you looking at everything just to try to get a snapshot of what's going on with this property. Anytime I send out property, I don't put the uh, actual address. I just don't. I usually look at, uh, you take the number of units, divide that by the asking price, and then that gives you, you know, how much per unit is, in a sense. And you're going to have the NOI. Y'all going to understand how to, cap, how to do that. And the cap rate, even though it is 6.1%, you can manipulate the cap rate when buying it. And just by looking at all the numbers and y'all going to see the numbers here, you know, as we get to that point, I look at this class right here. And when you, how you define class is like in school, you know, you get an A that's good, a B, you know, not as good as an A, but it's still good. And then a C and then a D. D class is usually like, you know, what? it's the ghetto. Let's just put it what it is. D class, it may be more of a, a hard neighborhood, a rough neighborhood. A lot of people will take C classes in B areas. You can have a C class in a B area. So, but this was done in 2003, 17 acres. That's a lot of land. I can see 99%. This number changes, and that was since March of 2019. And you'll be able to see what the I can see is when you're looking at the, uh, the T12, because the T12 tells a story. And when you look at that profit and loss statement, you know, it's going to provide you more numbers and y'all going to get some of that as well. So the average rent is $819. Average unit size, like I said, is pretty big. Uh, people are going to look at this, probably receive significant exterior updates in 2018, including siding replacement and full paint. That's just less things that you would have to do if you take this over. This is big right here. Being able to assume Freddie Mac loans, that's the loan that they have on it right now, 3.91%, maturing in 2026. And you would actually call them up to see, you know, how you assume that loan if, you know, if that's the route you're taking to, to get the loan or the person that's buying it. Uh, this is just more benefits or what have you. Park at uh, Crystal Kirk style. Offers a competitive amenity package, including garages, full-size washer and dryer. That's just uh, good amenities if you was to live there. You know, good to know. New leases are being executed, creating an additional $180,000 income. That's huge right there because that means, you know, that's a value play, bringing in more money. You know, they always want to, everybody wants to increase uh, the rents and everything and uh, beautify it and just make more money. I already went over this. Rents are below market. Management reports extremely low turnover. Three to four move outs per month. And if three to four move outs per month is great when you have a property that's four, 240 units. That's just awesome, you know, having that. Uh, 2018 area median income, four person household, 4.5%. Uh, 
uh, people look at, you know, you want to look at the area it, 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 that it's in. You don't want no, you don't want an area that has one stoplight. You know, you, you kind of you be hurting yourself doing that. So what I do from here, I take this information and all you can do is really look at the information or you can, like I told you before, you can take uh, 240 million, no, 240 divided by 21 million. And you just come up with whatever that number is. And that's going to give you the per uh, per unit, how much it costs per unit to have this particular property. So it's dependent on the area. Houston, I like Houston area. You know, you got the flooding, but, you know, it is what it is. $87,000 a unit. And you're still looking at, and I, like, like I said, one, two, and three unit bedrooms. So what somebody's going to do when they get this property, they're going to take that number divided by 240, come up with 87,500. The cap rate makes a little bit of difference before they, you know, when they want to do anything with it. And the NOI makes a little bit of difference when uh, people are looking at uh, how they can acquire the property. People know how to manipulate. They know how to manipulate the numbers uh, if they're buying it. So they're going to definitely look at the NOI and then the asking price to give you the cap rate. So what should happen is the NOI, which is one, two, three, seven, four, seven, two. Good gracious. A million dollars divided by the asking price, which is 21 million. I'm putting it in my calculator because you don't have to be a genius will give you the cap rate. And so I can already see that it's going to be a little off. <laughs> and and that's the thing. It, the things that you see as far as doing this stuff, the numbers are not going to be the way it should be. So you got to figure it out. You definitely got to figure it out. And, and why the cap rate is, well, they said the cap rate was, you know, 6.1. And then we do numbers and then you find out that it's 5.9. Life goes on and figure it out. Figure. I mean, but once I give you the spreadsheet and you start working through the numbers, you'll be able to manipulate the cap rate and uh, work it from there. Two, three. I'm, I'm just looking at the different numbers right quick. Okay. So you take the NOI, one, two, three, seven, four, seven, two. Divide that by the asking price of 21 million. And that's already showing that it's off. So, if I mean that that stays there, and to increase that cap rate, you could actually lower the asking price. You know, it's just different ways to do it. That's just an initial I want to give y'all. But what's going to happen? I'm going to give you your own. Uh, you're going to have your own rent roll and your own T12, and then we're going to work through numbers because that's that's what this is. You know, it's the simple math, but it is still numbers.